1941. Warsaw, 1941, a city once vibrant, now shrouded in despair. The world outside was at war, but inside the ghetto, a different battle raged. It was a battle for survival, for dignity, and for the very essence of humanity. The Nazis had built walls, trapping hundreds of thousands of Jews. These walls were not just physical barriers, but symbols of oppression and cruelty. We were a city imprisoned, cut off from the world we knew. The isolation was profound, a stark contrast to the bustling life we once enjoyed. Fear hung in the air, heavy and suffocating. It was a constant companion, lurking in every corner, in every shadow. We were ordered to wear the Star of David, a mark of shame. This symbol, meant to degrade us, became a badge of our shared suffering and resilience. Every day brought new horrors, new restrictions. The freedoms we once took for granted were stripped away, one by one. Our lives, once filled with family, work and laughter, were shrinking to the confines of these walls. The ghetto was a place where dreams were stifled and hope was a rare commodity. We clung to hope, but the ghetto's shadow stretched long and dark. Despite the despair, we found moments of courage and solidarity, small sparks of light in an otherwise bleak existence. The buildings, once homes and shops, were now crammed with families, ten people in a single room sharing meager rations, their dreams. Privacy was a luxury we could no longer afford. Sickness spread like wildfire and the weak succumbed quickly. The walls seemed to close in, suffocating us. Whispers traveled through the cracks, stories of brutality and loss. We shared what little we had, food, blankets, even stories from before when the world was a different place. Each day was a struggle for survival, a test of our will, of our... Food was scarce, a luxury we could barely afford. The daily struggle to find something to eat consumed our every waking moment. The gnawing emptiness in our bellies was a constant reminder of our dire situation. Bread lines stretched for blocks, filled with skeletal figures, their eyes hollow with hunger. Each person in line was a testament to the relentless grip of starvation. We stood for hours hoping for a morsel to sustain us for another day. The gnawing in our stomachs was a constant companion, it was a pain that never left. A dull ache that grew sharper with each passing day. We clutched our stomachs, trying to quell the hunger that gnawed at our insides. Children cried themselves to sleep, their tiny bodies ravaged by starvation. Their cries were a haunting symphony of despair, a sound that echoed through the night. The sight of their frail bodies was a heartbreaking reminder of our collective suffering. We ate what we could find, scraps, rotten vegetables, anything to quiet the hunger pangs. Desperation drove us to consume things we would have never considered before. Each bite, no matter how small or unappetizing, was a lifeline. Smuggling became a lifeline, a dangerous game of cat and mouse with the guards. Risking our lives, we sneaked food into the ghetto, knowing that getting caught could mean severe punishment or even death. Yet, the risk was worth it for the chance to feed our loved ones. Each bite was a victory, a small act of defiance against the Nazis who sought to break our spirits. In those moments, we reclaimed a piece of our humanity, refusing to let hunger and oppression strip us of our dignity. Every meal, no matter how meager, was a testament to our resilience and will to survive. Section 4, Sparks of Hope. Even in the darkness, sparks of hope flickered. Secret schools were organized, a testament to our belief in a future for our children. Theaters and orchestras, though silenced by the Nazis, found ways to perform their music, a beacon of hope in the despair. Love stories blossomed in the shadows, offering a glimmer of humanity amidst the barbarity. Acts of kindness, small and large, reminded us that even in this hellhole, we were still human. Section 5, Scars on the Soul. The Warsaw Ghetto left an indelible mark on our souls. The horrors we witnessed, the hunger we endured, the constant fear that gripped our hearts, the friends and family we lost, the countless faces that vanished into the abyss of history, forever etched in our memories. Each moment, each day was a struggle for survival, a battle against despair. We emerged from the ghetto, forever changed, our spirits scarred but unbroken, haunted by the ghosts of those who perished. Their voices, their laughter, their cries for help echo in our minds, but we also emerged with a profound appreciation for life, for freedom, for the simple joys we had once taken for granted. 
The warmth of the sun, the sound of birds singing, the touch of a loved one, these became treasures beyond measure. We learned to cherish every moment, to find beauty in the smallest things. The Warsaw Ghetto may have broken our bodies, left us with physical scars and ailments, but it could not break our spirit. We survived, and in our survival, we found a strength we never knew we possessed, a resilience that became our shield, our testament to the human spirit's capacity to endure, to overcome. We became living witnesses to the power of hope, the unyielding will to live, and the enduring quest for